and we were just jumping up and down like little girls squealing. <laughs> What is up, Bills Mafia? We have 230 days to go until the Buffalo Bills win Super Bowl 57, and this channel is going to document every single day leading up to that amazing moment with a video. It is Monday, and so that means we're going back in time to relive a memory. It is Memory Monday. For the memory today, I want to go back to a game that you may have watched if you're older like me. And if you didn't watch it and you're younger, you're still going to want to see how this game finishes. It was pretty wild. It is the opening game of the 1989 season. The Bills are in Miami to take on the Dolphins. We're going to pick up the action with the Dolphins leading 17 to 13 late in the fourth quarter. 17 13 here with 645 left to go in the fourth quarter. And it's third down and three for Marino. Great protection, and he rifles a strike right in there. And it's Andre Brown again. And Brown is becoming a favorite of Marino very quickly. What has happened is that the Buffalo defense, because of all those little check down patterns to the running back of the Dolphins, have moved up and try to take that away. That leaves Andre Brown one on one to run through the secondary. 15 yard pass play. Marino starting to get in that rhythm right now, isn't he? Yeah, he's. He's like a good baseball pitcher. He gets into a rhythm, takes the same amount of snaps, will throw it off his back foot, but he is sharp this afternoon. You can almost tell when he gets in it, he drops back, same amount of time, swings those hips and rifle strikes. 5.58 left. Hampton, nothing there, goes outside. Inside the 10-yard line, down to the 9. Daryl Talley is in on the tackle along with Leonard Smith. So when they had to pull Stratford, they found an ace in Hampton today. Well, also that right side of the Miami offensive line doing a good job. Number 72, Ronnie Lee and Harry Galbraith, the right side, starting to cave it in over there. Take a look at it. It's also Farrell Edmonds, number 80. Brown, number 36, leading through the hole. A good block on the linebacker there, and Lorenzo Hampton does the rest. Buffalo's defense has got to be saying, right now, we've got to hold him to a field goal. 5-15 left. The difference in the game is four. Miami in the lead. Oh, that's a nightmare right there. And Marino juggled the snap all the way up and was lucky to hold on. That's Bruce Smith on filing. And Leon Seals, too. A field goal would allow Buffalo to, to get their offense back on the field within striking distance. The ball slips right through. It's hot out there. It's humid. It's very sticky. This happens on occasion. Marino pulled back just a little bit too soon. And... Gratefully for the Dolphins, it just popped right back up into his arms, but a dangerous play. Buffalo's defense has been out there a lot this afternoon. This humidity, they're getting a little bit winded. Third down, four yards to go. Inside the 10 at the Buffalo nine-yard line. Jensen joins Marino in the backfield right now. a flag down but it won't matter they had grabbed Brown that's a score Got some making up to do. Andre.
Andre Brown, the ironic part about that, a free agent here in camp, had Mark Clayton, the all-pro, not been a holdout, he probably would not have made the team. And here, on opening day at Joe Robbie Stadium, he becomes the hero thus far. Jim Kelly on first down, down by 11 points. He throws high, it's incomplete, intended for Ronnie Harmon. Let's go to New York, an NFL update with Bob Costas. Jim at the Meadowlands, the Patriots reclaim the lead. A 31-yard pass from Easton to Cedric Jones sets it up. Then it's Reggie Dupard off tackle, cutting back five yards for the score. But they miss the extra point, leaving them only three points ahead and giving the Jets a chance to tie if they can hit a field goal. Jets have the ball with 45 seconds to go. Ooh, those extra points. It is second down and 10 after the Kelly incompletion. He steps up, he fires, he's got Flip Johnson, a great pass and catch by Johnson out over the 35 to the 36 yard line. And Lewis Oliver, playing with a twisted ankle, comes in and rocks Johnson after he made the catch. Yeah, Buffalo goes to the hurry up offense, down by 11 points. They've got to put two scoring drives together with just 3.40 left of the game. So they go right back to work after a 19 yard pass play. And he connects this time with Andre Reed, and that's what's been missing from their attack all day long. Go back to the first half when Reed dropped what looked like a sure touchdown strike from Kelly. That seemed to begin the problems for the Buffalo offense. They had been running the ball extremely well. They go play action fake. Perfect throw by Jim Kelly, dropped by Andre Reed. And since then, this Buffalo offense has not done well. 331 left. In regulation time, the catch is made by Thomas. He's going to try and get out of bounds and pick up yardage and does both very well as Oliver was trying to chase him. And he gets it inside the Miami 40-yard line now, down to the 38, and they move closer. Plus, they're really conserving that clock. If you're sitting home in Buffalo and saying, wait a minute, why weren't they doing this all day? Well, that's not quite fair because Miami's defense is now playing well off the ball. They're willing to give that underneath stuff to Jim Kelly, and that's the reason for these big pickups. Leaving. Ted Mark Chabrota, the offensive coordinator. How do you get 11 points in a hurry? They need that to tie. Reed pulls it down inside the 30. He's brought down by Rodney Thomas at the 27 yard line. Clock running. They must hustle. 12 yard pickup and a first down. Coming up to three minutes remaining. Kelly out of the shotgun. Ends up, Flip Johnson, touchdown Buffalo! A beautifully orchestrated drive by Kelly to get them right back in the game. And a big surprise that Johnson was given man-to-man -man coverage down the sideline. In this situation, you think that the Dolphins go with the deep, heavy back zone, but here, it's Paul Langford, number 44, and he's got to take Johnson one-on-one -on -one right to the end zone. A great throw by Kelly, just over the outstretched arms of number 44, Langford. Marcha Broda said it before the contest. Jim Kelly is as accurate as any quarterback in the NFL. Norwood out of the hold of Kidd. It's good. And it's a 24-20 Miami lead after the touchdown catch by Flip Johnson with 2.50 remaining in regulation time. Mark Logan and Lorenzo Hampton ready to accept the Norwood kickoff in a 24-20 Miami lead late here in the fourth quarter. It's Logan, and he brings it out to the 24-yard line. He's tackled by Dwight Frame. Also in on the tackle, Keith McKellar at tight end, 20-yard run back. Now, you've seen these conferences, Marino and Shula, Normally, you would think that a team here would try and run the football. That's not a given with the Miami Dolphins. The short passing game with Marino is almost as good as the quick handoff. They've got to try and eat some time off this clock, get a couple of first downs, plenty of time left for the Buffalo Bills. They're certainly not out of it. 2.40 left and down by just four points. Surveying the situation, Dan Marino, 25-yard line, gives it off, Hampton. 
struggles to get a couple of yards out to the 25 with 2.32 remaining in regulation time, and the Bills, I believe, will use a timeout. Yes, they do. That's a smart move, trying to use the two-minute warning as yet another timeout. It's like having an extra one in the bank. Now, Marino, in this situation, usually likes to throw the football, even though it's second down and they just want to try and run out as much time as they can. They've got enough confidence in him to let him throw the short balls. Two timeouts for both Buffalo and Miami are remaining. A gain of one on that last play, second down and nine. Now, the conference continues between Marino and Shula. Who's doing a lot of the talking over there, and who will make the decision? The decision is purely Don Shula's. You notice we have not mentioned Gary Stevens a lot, the uh, offensive coordinator who came over from the University of Miami. He's still trying to pick up this pro, pro game, the pro offense, dealing with the players. Don Shula has always made the offensive calls for the Dolphins. He will continue to do so. Next Sunday, join NBC for more great football beginning at 12.30. Bob Costas, O.J. Simpson, and NFL Live. Then NBC presents regional coverage of some great hard-hitting games. The Dolphins and Patriots from New England. Eric Dickerson leads his Colts into L.A. to battle his former team, the Rams. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. NBC football, it's a whole new ball game. 2.31 left. Regulation time, 24-20. Miami leading over the Bills. Miami with the ball, second down and nine. A lot of movement there. And flags fly. We pull them or not? Well, it looks like the Dolphins pulled out quickly. About three guys from their offensive line. For very good reason. That's cheek number 77. The Ups are going against Smith. The reason for it, hey, Smith might have whispered to him, look, I'm coming, pal. You know I'm coming here. But could that have signified that that was a pass play, then pulling out quickly like that? Of course. And if you take a look at Cheek on this play, he may be back on his haunches. It's a clear indication. And as he gets older and plays more, this offense will realize you can't do it that way. Well, now it's second down and 14. And they're a little bit deeper back at their 19-yard line. And Marino is back. And he connects. And a big first down to Farrell Edmonds. Seventeen yards. The Dolphins think that Farrell Edmonds could be the tight end of the 1990s, with good reason. 6'6", 252, quite a bit of speed. Watch him curl inside and make the catch. They've cleared up that vision problem he had early on in his career. The reason he went in the third round, because he didn't hang out to the football. He does it there, beating Leonard Smith, number 46, over the middle. Buffalo uses another timeout. So they have one left, but remember, they'll also get one at the two-minute warning. So with 2.17 remaining, Dan Marino to the sidelines. A very populated discussion over there. Everybody's got their helmet in this one. Now, the difference in this game, remember, we go back just a couple of minutes. That block punt by Jim Jensen, number 11 in your screen. Here it was. Jensen breaking through. And it's Logan, number 20, who comes up with the touchdown, but the special teams contributing here. The Miami Dolphin four-point lead, and that has been the difference in the game thus far. It's a final score now. The Raiders open up with a 40-14 win over the San Diego Chargers, and another new head coach, Dan Henning, opens up with a loss. Now the Dolphins, with that big first down, now can go back to the running game if they choose to. With 217 left in the game, they'll either force the Bills to use up their last timeout or go to the two-minute warning. First and 10, the ball is at their own 38. After that huge pass to Farrell Edmonds, this is Tom Brown. No gain at all, smothered by Bentley, by Talley, and by Bruce Smith. Clock is running down, and they'll get that two-minute warning timeout that I told you about. At no charge. That one, that one belongs to the NFL. That's remaining. Buffalo has won. If they could cash in and pay for a couple more, they would, because they're in trouble with two minutes remaining in the game. They trail by four to Miami, 24-20. So the difference there tells you they need a touchdown, and they need some time, and they need the ball back, and that's the most important thing, and they don't have it. We go back to that old Dolphin pattern. First round, or first down, nothing on the running game. Now it's second and 10. Look for Marino to throw the football. Something very cautious, of course, a little short passing game that Marino is so successful with. But you know what Marv Levy's doing? He's revving up Cornelius Bennett and Bruce Smith, and that will not bode well for that young Miami offensive line. Here comes Marino. This crowd, and 
it is not a sellout. In fact, far short of a sellout, but they have sounded as though the place was full and have been pulling for their Dolphins all day long against a powerful Bills team. It is second and ten. The quick pass. Hampton makes the catch, tries to spin out, but Mark Kelso knocks him down. Kelso out of William & Mary. Seven interceptions last year, but he's been hurt through the preseason. And the Bills will take their final timeout. All right, we'll be back right after this timeout. 420, Jim Jensen comes in. Marino's in, of course. When Jensen comes in, you know it's third down, and it is third and eight. Jensen is in his career has about an 85% completion percentage on third down conversion so you can bet that the Buffalo Bills are going to pay extra attention to him a minute 52 remaining Buffalo is out of timeouts they've got to get the ball back so they have to defend here on third down and eight big rush and a big interception Nate Odoms and he goes down at the midfield stripe. You talk about big turnovers. Nate Odoms just came up with it. His second interception of the game, and that look tells it all. Hey, you live by the pass, it comes back to bite you. Marino had Jim Jensen wide open in the flat. He elected to go downfield, but Odoms beats the receiver across the formation. Take a look at it, Common number 58, going right up the cut. Marino had Jensen in the flat, wide open. Odoms has played quite a, quite a day today. He's going against Cooper. That time he wins the battle. The 49-yard line of Buffalo. First to 10. Kelly without timeouts. Down by four points. He's got a man. Caught. Chris Burkett makes the catch. They're into Miami territory at the 42. Remember, they're out of timeouts. A minute 33, and it's running. And they're right up to the line of scrimmage. He got it off to Thomas, first down at the 36. Kelly calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. He called two in the huddle to begin the drive, but now he's got an audible at the line. And with this crowd, it might be difficult to do. Down to a minute five remaining. And he connects again. That's three in a row. Rodney Thomas smothers Burkett after he makes the catch. Under a minute. No timeouts. point might be worth throwing an incompleted pass to stop the clock. Kelly, he's got Johnson. He threw it high at the 11-yard line. For a brief second, number 80 was wide open. It was wide open, and Kelly put it right between the two defenders. The Bills made a tactical error, though. They spent too much time at the line of scrimmage. What Kelly did was he changed the strength of the formation. The backs had a switch, the receivers had a switch, and so did the tight end. It cost them five or six seconds. 41 seconds remaining. Miami nursing a four-point lead. That's Don Shula, along with Tom Olivadotti. He's got the headset. But this guy's got control of the ball game right now. He's got another man picked down. It's Thurman Thomas down to the 20. They'll mark him at the Miami 19-yard line with a half minute left. Kelly's got to throw the ball out of bounds. If he doesn't have a play call now, he's got to throw it out. The clock is ticking. He's taking too much time at the line. 23 seconds. Kelly steps up. He's got Andre Reed down to the five. They'll mark him back at the six-yard line, but time is running. Look at this. 12 seconds. flag on the play because one of the Dolphins did not get back. Kelly is under no obligation to wait for him to do so. Smart play by Jim Kelly. He's completely within the rules just to take it and throw it right into the ground. Well, with two seconds left to go, it's down to this. Touchdown wins it. Anything short of that, Miami's got it. What a finish here at Joe Romney Stadium. 24-20 Dolphins. Seconds left. The ball at the eight yard line of Miami. All right, 
One play does it. Mark Gibrota just tells Marv Levy, here's what we're going to run. Let's watch. Two seconds left. They have to get into the end zone. And Kelly now turns and says, I can't hear. He's going to run it. Touchdown, Buffalo. They win. So when Jim Kelly scored that touchdown on the last play of the game, I remember exactly where I was. I was with my uncle in his house and we were just jumping up and down like little girls squealing, squealing. It was so awesome. What a way to start the 1989 season. Are you old enough to remember that game? If you are, tell me where you were when that play happened. For now, see you tomorrow.